Palaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Ghost. This episode is titled Independence Day. Independence Hall had borne witness to many of America's proudest moments throughout its long and storied history. The hallowed walls where the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were penned had rung with the impassioned voices of the Founding Fathers as they laid the foundations for a new nation. But on this sweltering 4th of July night, as throngs of raucous revelers flooded the streets outside, a far more sinister force stirred within the ancient edifice's shadowed chambers. It was a malevolent presence that had slumbered for centuries, awaiting the culmination of cosmic alignments to awaken from its unsettling slumber. For the staff and park rangers tasked with overseeing the holiday celebrations at Independence Hall, it began with a series of seemingly innocuous occurrences. Strange noises echoing through the vacant corridors, doors slamming inexplicably, and an overwhelming sense of dread that seemed to permeate the very air they breathed. Jacob Myers, a seasoned park ranger, was among the first to experience the unsettling phenomena firsthand. As he conducted his customary patrol of the dimly lit assembly rooms, he couldn't shake the eerie feeling of being watched, as if unseen eyes were scrutinizing his every move. <laughs> Suddenly, a blood-curdling scream tore through the silence, the sound so jarring and unnatural that Jacob's very soul felt as though it had been pierced. Heart pounding, he raced towards the source of the commotion, his trembling flashlight beam casting feeble illumination over the suffocating darkness. What he witnessed in that lightless chamber would forever be seared into his memory, a waking nightmare from which there could be no escape. Within moments, the entire structure seemed to come alive with malicious intent as the tormented shrieks of countless restless souls echoed through the corridors. Ghostly apparitions began to manifest, each one bearing the unmistakable wounds and garments of the late 18th century. Soldiers with ghastly bayonet wounds weeping ethereal pus, servants with rope-burned necks and horrifically contorted spines, and even the piteous forms of young children, their delicate features forever frozen in rictuses of pure anguish. This is our requiem, the spectral nobleman's voice boomed, seeming to emanate from every shadowed corner and recess. Our eternal lament for the cruel injustices we suffered at the hands of the British crown. And you, the great-grandchildren of the revolution we bled and died for, shall be the audience to our damning performance. With those chilling words, the assembled legion of ghosts opened their ethereal moors and released a deafening chorus of anguished howls and lamentations. The very foundations of Independence Hall trembled as if reverberating with the collective torment of the centuries. Jacob collapsed to his knees, his hands clasped over his ears in a futile attempt to drown out the unholy cacophony. All around him, the phantasmal beings began to reenact the atrocities that had sealed their eternal damnation. Soldiers impaled themselves on ghostly pikes. Mothers hurled their spectral infants against the walls with sickening forces, and nobles slashed their own throats with aplomb. It was a symphony of death and suffering made manifest. A damning requiem that laid bare the brutal ugliness beneath the veneer of the American Revolution's celebrated glory. As the agonizing performance reached its crescendo, the ghostly nobleman turned its ruined gaze upon the broken ranger, its eyes burning with the fury of ages. Now you shall become one with our eternal chorus, it intoned, its words carrying the inescapable weight of damnation itself. 
Raising its severed wrists towards Jacob's trembling form, the spirit summoned forth shards of ethereal bone that materialized as razor-sharp lances of ectoplasmic energy. With a mere thought, the gruesome projectiles lanced forth, burying themselves deep within Jacob's chest in a torrent of spectral viscera. He could feel the icy tendrils of oblivion snaking through his veins, beckoning him into the endless void that surely awaited. But just as the darkness threatened to claim him, a blinding light erupted from somewhere deep within the shadowed recesses of the hall. The ghostly nobleman recoiled, its form wavering violently as the radiant luminescence washed over the nighted chamber. One by one, the anguished wails of its ghastly coterie fell deathly silent, their manifestations banished beneath the searing onslaught of the mysterious light. From around a corner strode the imposing figure of a man clad in the unmistakable garments of a Continental Army officer, his tri-cornered hat and deep blue coat standing in stark contrast to the ethereal bloodshed that had moments ago consumed the hall. His weathered features radiated a sense of quiet strength and stalwart resolution, and his eyes burned with the intensity of a thousand campfires. Enough of this wanton folly, his voice rang out, resonant and commanding in a way that could only belong to a being of immense spiritual fortitude. You shame the memories of those brave souls who willingly gave their lives in the name of liberty. Your bitterness and hatred is an affront to the very principles this nation was founded upon. Hypocrite, the phantom nobleman spat, its ruined features contorting with rage. You speak of liberty, yet was it not by the edge of the sword that you cast off the yoke of English rule? We bled and died in droves so that you might cast yourself as a hero of the people. The spectral officer's gaze remained solemn and unwavering, his presence exuding a sense of fortitude that seemed to chase away the lingering tendrils of dread. There is no glory to be found in war, nor in the suffering it begets, he replied, his words carrying the weight of eons. But sometimes, the most profound bravery manifests in a willingness to sacrifice everything for the cause of freedom, to stare into the eye of oblivion itself so that future generations might know peace and liberty. As he spoke those words, the radiant light surrounding him intensified, its purifying essence beginning to envelop the ghostly nobleman. The entity howled in defiance, thrashing wildly as the searing energy seared away at its ethereal form bit by bit. You shall not be forgotten, nor will your sacrifices be in vain, the officer said, his solemn tones laced with an unmistakable compassion. But it is time for you to surrender your burdens and find peace in the afterlife. Your suffering ends this night. In one final earth-shattering crescendo of anguish, the malign spirit released a scream that seemed to reverberate through the entire cosmos. Its corporeal shape fragmented and dissolved beneath the radiant onslaught, the ambient glow consuming every last vestige of its tormented existence. As the luminance faded, Jacob found himself slumped against the chamber wall, every fibre of his being drained from having borne witness to the supernatural confrontation. The officer's spectral form stood resolute nearby, the air around him thrumming with an almost palpable sense of tranquility. Who? What are you? Jacob managed to rasp, his voice little more than a hoarse whisper. The ghost regarded him with an almost paternal expression, a mirthful glimmer dancing within his wizened eyes. I am merely a custodian of sorts, a shepherd tasked with guiding the lost and tormented spirits of this nation's bloody past towards the tender embrace of the afterlife. On this night, when the celestial forces align to grant the restless dead their one chance at manifestation, I ensure that the painful spectres of our heritage do not rise to tarnish the light of freedom with their bitterness. Slowly, the apparition began to fade, its final words seeming to echo out across the entirety of space and time. This independence we celebrate was born from the anguish of countless sacrifices, noble and wretched alike. But the true patriotism lies in striving to forge a more peaceful and just future from the ashes of our turbulent past. 
Never let the light of liberty be extinguished beneath the weight of anguished spirits clinging to the old hatreds. With that, the spectral figure winked out of existence, leaving Jacob alone in the eerie silence of the hall. Outside, the riotous festivities still roared unabated, the revelers happily oblivious to the harrowing supernatural upheaval that had threatened to unravel on this most sacred of American nights. And as the first blush of dawn's light crept through the ancient window panes to bathe the chamber in a warm, comforting glow, Jacob rose to his feet, his spirit imbued with a new sense of gratitude and resolve. For in that moment, he understood the true meaning of independence. Not merely the establishment of a new nation, but the eternal struggle to sever the shackles of anger, fear and oppression that bin us to the darkest chapters of our shared past. It was a sobering realization, one that would forever alter his perceptions of the 4th of July celebrations to come. Ghost is a Calaroga Shark Media production, written and hosted by Alexander Ian McIntyre. Produced by Mark Francis. Executive producers Mark Francis and John McDermott. Portions of this podcast may have been created with the assistance of AI. This show, along with hundreds of others from Calaroga Shark Media, is available commercial free on any player. Hassle free. Just look for the link in the episode or show notes. Ghost now has merch. Find shirts, mugs, and more with the Ghost logo for sale at our merch store. There's free shipping and 10% off now with the coupon NEWMERCH10. Did we say there's free shipping? Check out all the goods at caloroga.com, that's C-A-L-O-R-O-G-A.com, or just look for the link in the show notes. Thanks for supporting the show, we really appreciate it. Caloroga Shark Media, 